Hi, I'm Dr. Dominic King. Uh, today we're going to be talking about procedural pearls related to minimally invasive tenotomy and the application to plantar fasciopathy and Achilles tendinopathy. So high level pearls, uh, number one, musculoskeletal ultrasound training obviously is a must. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, you either are already using ultrasound or you're interested in incorporating ultrasound into your practice and are interested in what you could do with that ultrasound training. Uh, in the fellows that we train, we normally say 100 to 150 evaluations or ultrasound guided injections. Gives you a pretty good firm understanding of the underlying sonoanatomy. You get a good idea of what looks normal, what looks pathologic, how to visualize your needle or a device under ultrasound. Before you do your first minimally invasive tenotomy procedure, you really want to have all those skills under hand. You want to make sure that you understand, regardless of the direction that the tendinosis lies, uh, where the patient is lying, where your device is going to be coming in, that you know how to uh, manage the view of not only the anatomy, but also of the uh, device. You really want to have a mastery of both of those before starting in on MIT. So if you do ultrasound guided injections, you feel very good about uh, doing plantar fascia, perifascial injections. Uh, and approaching the Achilles uh, tendon as well. You shouldn't really have uh, too much of a difficulty transitioning over to using uh, MIT in the same setting. The ultrasound-based diagnoses in a previous video, we went over the uh, classification and a type three, type four classification again has those degenerative features. The defining difference between this is that it, uh, type four has an inflammatory on degenerative. So it has that hyperemia that you see on power Doppler. But we want to apply MIT to that degenerative tissue. That's what the device is used for, is the debridement and removal of that degenerative tendon or fascia tissue. Hyperemia, split tears, insertional tendinopathy. Managing patient expectations is incredibly important when talking about any procedure, but very important with minimally invasive tenotomy. Patients are going to seek this out because they heard about it's less invasive, there's less recovery time. Uh, there's a lot of positivity that goes along with this. A lot of patients walk around for a long time having pain in their Achilles tendon, their plantar fascia, and if they see a provider like you that does this type of treatment, they're already excited about it, but not being overly excited, making sure that patients understand that this is a surgery just like anything else. It's minimally invasive, it's a minimally invasive tenotomy, it's done in the office, uh, but there's some important features that match with a little bit longer of recovery, those being significant hyperemia, so the really inflamed GK4 type of tendons or fascia. If there's longitudinal split tears, and we'll go through that uh, in this presentation as well, insertional tendinopathy for the Achilles. Uh, we all know that mid-substance Achilles tendinopathy tends to be a little bit easier to manage rather than that chronic insertional, large Haglund's deformity, intratendinous calcifications. It's, it's just an angrier beast. And in treating it, you need to make sure to manage expectations, let patients know. Just off the rip, this is one that's probably going to take four to eight weeks longer to recover. Uh, if you're doing any corticosteroid injections, again, you're likely not doing them in the Achilles or around the Achilles tendon, but certainly in, the, in and around the plantar fascia. A uh, recommendation that we give is waiting three months prior to moving forward with minimally invasive tenotomy. Uh, when you do an MIT, you want to make sure there's a good healing environment. You want a good bed of inflammation uh, that's going to naturally occur because you're doing a procedure there. You really don't want anything to interrupt. Uh, we feel that three months is a, an appropriate time uh, to wait before pursuing uh, MIT. Uh, just from a practice management standpoint, having a separate procedure day and not trying to put this throughout a day with patients uh, is, is probably advisable. Uh, it makes sure that you're not rushing. Uh, it's nice to kind of match it all up into uh, one procedure day. It gives you opportunity for your staff to know what to expect during that day. Uh, we recommend rehearsing uh, with the staff just like any other surgical procedure so that there's a smooth transition in the steps of the procedure. And we currently schedule 45 minute time slots. It gives us enough time to turn the room uh, around while we're consenting and talking to another patient. Work very closely with your orthopedic surgical colleagues and your physical therapy group. Uh, this is a team sport, certainly managing tendinopathy is a team sport for the referrals that are gonna come to you uh, that have either some diagnostic ultrasound done by a musculoskeletal radiologist, or if you're doing your own diagnostic ultrasounds, making sure that your team knows the types of patients that you want to see, the type of patients you want to send to them, and then from a physical therapy standpoint, that they understand what this is. This uh, should be respected, just like a surgery would be respected by the physical therapy group, but they also need to understand that the inherent difference here is that we're not causing any damage to the 
good tendon tissue that's there. We're debriding out the degenerative chronic tissue. So our ability of starting to load these tendons is much quicker and much better than a standard open debridement or a tendon release or some other type of uh, larger surgical procedure. Uh, and we'll go through that in another video talking about the post-operative management, uh, but it is an important piece for the physical therapy group to understand. And then hydro dissection. We're going to talk about this. Uh, it's something that you're already doing, even if you don't know that you're doing it uh, every time you do an injection. Uh, and we are specifically focusing on that uh, as being performed at the time of anesthesia uh, with every procedure. And we'll show you a couple of videos on that. For patient positioning for either approaching the plantar fascia or the Achilles tendon, plantar fascia, we have patients in lateral decubitus, depending on the area of pain. This is a nice way to be able to approach the medial aspect here. Uh, the way we approach it is in uh, transverse, so we're coming across the area of the plantar fascia. Same thing with the Achilles tendon, we have the patient prone, and we're coming again transverse to the uh, tendon. It may seem natural that the way the plantar fascia lies and the way the Achilles tendon lies that you'd wanna come in plane longitudinal uh, to that uh, structure. But I'll show you in a couple of these videos uh, the reason why uh, we, we approach it in transverse. So the first thing that we were talking about and one of the last things was, was hydrodissection. This is a Kager fat pad squeeze test. So for those of you familiar with sonar anatomy of the Achilles tendon, the Achilles tendon is up here at the top. Kager fat pad sits underneath it. Uh, and then the interface between it here, you can see a very thin white line interface between the uh, Achilles tendon and the fat pad here. And you can see how that thickens right in this area. You get this hyperechoic area where it's a bit thicker. What we're doing here is we're squeezing the fat pad. So there's no pressure on the tendon. You have the ultrasound probe uh, longitudinal to the tendon with really light pressure. And then we're pushing with our fingers and kind of squeezing the fat pad underneath and in, in kind of almost milking it down. And what you're noticing is tethering or a area of the tendon that's actually getting pulled down. If you look at a normal healthy Achilles tendon and healthy fat pad with no tethering, you're able to manipulate the fat pad quite a bit without actually pulling down on the tendon at all. So this is what we would consider a tethered tendon. Uh, we have a link down at the bottom of a case series that we put out discussing uh, the fat pad squeeze test and this tethered tendon uh, syndrome. Uh, a real easy thing to do to address this and when we're numbing up the tendon for the procedure, I always start in the fat pad and perform a hydro dissection. So every time you do a corticosteroid injection or an anesthetic injection or a trigger point injection, you're injecting that fluid into an area. And if you inject that fluid into an area of fascia where there is scarring, you're going to make a cavitation. You're going to separate those layers of tissue. And doing it under ultrasound, you can see exactly where you are. This is an old school Briesmont procedure for the Achilles tendon. This has been in the literature for decades. Uh, this is a very new way of doing it under ultrasound guidance. So what you'll see is uh, this is a longitudinal out of plane view, a needle in the middle of the screen, and you can see the fascia actually splits. You're dissecting the fat pad off of the Achilles tendon. This in isolation can sometimes be a very helpful uh, procedure for Achilles tendon pain. So to identify the right patient population that may benefit from minimally invasive tenotomy with Tenjet, you may want to start by doing a hydrodissection procedure in the office if there's not really a lot of intratendinous pathology. But if they have intratendinous pathology, you're going to be presenting a, a patient that looks like they'll benefit from minimally invasive tenotomy. Doing a hydrodissection of the fat pad at the same time as you're numbing up the tendon, it's easy to do. Uh, you know, we don't submit any additional charge or anything uh, for that. You know, we're anesthetizing the tissue, but you're getting another separation of possibly pathologic tissue that has a lot of nerve fibers and may be causing quite a bit of pain in addition to the intratendinous uh, pathology. So hydrodissection certainly done uh, at the time of uh, Achilles uh, tenotomy for a mid-substance uh, uh, tendinosis condition. The uh, tenotomy procedure here, so uh, just give you a little bit of uh, orientation. You, we are transverse to the Achilles tendon here. So you can see the Achilles tendon here. Nice healthy tissue underneath. Dark hypoechogenic tendinosis on top. This is typically where you see the tendinosis in a mid-substance Achilles tendinopathy 
patient. Uh, it's almost always posterior uh, here. Uh, so obviously we're, we're posterior here, anterior uh, to the lower part of the screen. It's almost like the, this posterior part. And that's probably because that's the area that's going to get loaded the most. If you think about coming into really significant dorsiflexion, you're really loading those posterior fibers. Uh, and so this is what it looks like coming uh, transverse in plane. Uh, this is in real time. This isn't sped up. This is the uh, procedure and how I kind of needle in and out. Remember, you're debriding out this tissue. So, you know, you can't just hold the device there. Uh, this is what I call the MIT sweep, right? So we're sweeping the device in uh, superiorly and inferiorly. So if you think about, if we go back to the last slide, if you come in plane with this tendon, let's say there's this significant tendinotic area here, you make your incision and you come longitudinal in plane, you'll be able to enter right in through the tendon because you, you have to find a soft area where you're actually gonna be able to pierce through in through the sheath to get it in. You're not gonna get uh, that tenjet device in through this part of the tendon because it's a very dense regular connective tissue. If you come in this way, you're gonna have a hard time switching the probe backwards to get a little bit more inferior and superior. This is why we set the patient up in that lateral decubitus and come transverse, because not only are we able to get into this larger chunk of tendinosis that's here, but you'll see when I turn the probe, so right now I'm transverse, I'm about to turn 90 degrees, now I'm looking at it longitudinal, I'm able to sweep that probe superior and inferior to reach all of those areas and still be able to needle back and forth. This has been a technique that's, it's very comfortable for you to be able to uh, get into the tendon. A lot of times patient with big Haglund deformities, you gotta get up over that uh, Haglund deformity to get down into the tendon. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. Comfortable position for the patient makes it very easy for you to uh, pass in through the tendon, exact same approach that we take for the plantar fascia. Uh, so the MIT sweep might be a, a technique and you kind of see how it's done uh, here uh, to employ when approaching these tendons. For plantar fasciopathy, hydrodissection is very similar. So we have a transverse uh, look at the plantar fascia here. You can see the needle coming in. This is the fat pad underneath it where the heel would be. Uh, here's your calcaneus underneath and this is the plantar fascia. Very nice hydrodissection separating all of this kind of thickened inflammatory type of fascial tissue. So this was the anesthetic being injected into the fascia and then the hydrodissection is the last part. Again, very easy to do at the time of minimally invasive tenotomy. Again, removing and pulling those type of inflammatory uh, nerve fibers in that fascia off of the plantar fascia. And then the procedure, very similar in, in scope of how you're doing the Achilles tendon, uh, passing again directly around that medial insertion. I, I don't really get up into the arch too much. Uh, most of the time, those pains are more related to uh, fibromas. Uh, that, that insertional plantar fasciosis uh, really is pretty close to, to that calcaneus, so I'm not uh, coming too distal either. What about tears? Uh, so this is a great question. You, you see on MRI and ultrasound findings, quite a few different kind of tears. Most important thing, classify that tear. Is this a longitudinal split tear or is it a transverse tear, what we consider a partial rupture? So looking at the calcaneus here and here and the Achilles tendon, understand the configuration and how this affects the loading of the tendon. If it's a longitudinal split tear, overall you still, from a transverse cross section, have similar numbers of fibers that are running longitudinally, similar numbers of fibers, fibers that can be loaded. So even though in a longitudinal split tear, you have some small tearing here, you probably still have 95, 90% of the tendon that can be loaded longitudinally. In converse, a transverse tear is going to have areas transversely that are gone, right? So in a cross-sectional area, you have less number of tendon fibers that can be loaded. So this is where you gotta work with your surgical colleagues uh, to talk to them about if it's a high degree partial rupture or transverse tear with a large amount of tendinosis and you're debriding that tendinosis, those are gonna be the ones that conceptually may have a higher rate or risk of possible tearing if you continue to load them up, you load them too quickly after the procedure, or you're debriding out too much tendinosis. For longitudinal split tears, I have very little worry uh, from these because we have so many good longitudinal fibers that are still intact. So I would say in our uh, practice, in our clinic, in our group, uh, we 
knock on wood, have had no ruptures. We've done over a thousand of these procedures. And I would directly relate that to probably being picky for the patient population that we choose. We want to choose the right procedure given that pathology, not just apply the procedure because they have Achilles tendinosis. So this is one where I'd be more likely to refer out a high degree partial rupture to one of our surgical colleagues for open debridement repair and the longitudinal split tears with tendinosis or hyperemia for a minimally invasive tenotomy. It's a high level overview of the pearls for minimally invasive tenotomy for plantar fasciopathy and Achilles tendinopathy. Thank you very much.